So do you know what happens when you tip trim a golf shaft or butt trim a golf shaft? Well, if you said the stiffness changes, you'd be right. But how it changes and how we measure it, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Hi everyone, it's AJ, the Mobile Club Maker. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy it, please like it, share it, or subscribe to the channel down below. Today we're gonna to be talking about shaft stiffness and tip trimming, butt trimming, how that affects the shaft. So first, let me ask you a question. What do you think happens when we trim a shaft, either from the tip end or the butt end? Does the shaft get stiffer? Does it get softer? Does it depend? Is it some of each? Just sort of think about that in your head, put it in the back of your mind, and we're gonna come back to that at the end of the video. Okay, so we're gonna talk about three different methods of measuring flex. One being frequency, second being load deflection, and third going to be looking at bend profiles. Uh, the first of which, frequency, you've probably seen me use it on some of my videos before. I have a frequency meter, which essentially is just a vise on one end that clamps the shaft in, and then we bend and release the shaft and count how quickly it oscillates back and forth through a laser. The basics of that is the faster it's moving, the stiffer the shaft is. The slower it's moving, the more flexible the shaft is. So we're gonna take some measurements using our frequency meter. Second, we're gonna look at load deflection. This is another method that's been around for a long time. Essentially, we take the shaft, again, we put it into a vise, lock it down on the butt end, and then we hang weight off of the tip end, a certain amount of weight, and we look at how much the shaft is bending. The idea being, the more it's bending, the more flexible it is. The more rigid it stays, the stiffer it is. The third method we're gonna look at is what's called a bend profile. And we're gonna look at maybe doing some averages of bend profiles. Well, you probably know what the first two are because I've used the frequency measurements before and a low deflection is pretty self-explanatory. But you may not understand necessarily what a bend profile is or have seen a bend profile before. So let me show you what a bend profile looks like. Okay, so here's a bend profile that I just built myself. This is not from a specific shaft. This is one that I created just to get the basic look that I wanted. I put numbers into a spreadsheet and had it export a line graph. Uh, what you see here on the x-axis is the length of the shaft, basically, starting at the tip and moving to the butt end. And on the y-axis, you have a measurement of stiffness. And what you see, and what you will see with every single shaft ever made, basically, is a line graph that starts more flexible at the tip and becomes stiffer as it goes into the butt end. This goes for every single shaft. Now, they may move differently as far as how the line curves as it goes up. It may have a different amount of curve, being the difference between the stiffness in the tip versus the stiffness in the butt end, but they're all going to have this movement going from a softer tip to a stiffer butt section. You can find these bend profiles different places. Some manufacturers will show them to you on their websites and show you each of their shafts and the bend profiles, some of them won't. Um, there are some third-party sites where you can find this information also. It's basically just a more detailed look at how the stiffness of a shaft moves through it. Well, how do you acquire these numbers to get this bend profile? How do you take these measurements? It's essentially just a three-point load test um, that they use in engineering. You have your shaft uh, and you place it onto a machine. It's got a couple of supports on the bottom, about a certain number of inches apart. It rests on that, and then from the other direction, there's a load cell that comes down, puts pressure on the shaft, and measures the resistance. So what you essentially do is you start at one end of the shaft, you put it in, you take a measurement, then you move the shaft down a little bit, do the same thing, you take another measurement, then you move the shaft down again, take another measurement. You work your way all the way from one end of the shaft to the other 
getting numerous data points, which you can then put in to a spreadsheet and create a line graph like we have here. How many data points do you need? Well, you can have as many or as few really as you want. You could have as few as three, do one at the tip, one in the middle, one at the butt end. You could have 30. It just depends how detailed you want to get in your uh, graph. Really doesn't matter as long as you use the same method for every shaft that you measure. Okay, so we have our three different methods of measuring shaft stiffness. So let's take a shaft and actually measure it with these methods and see what we come up with. Um, I am using a shaft. It's not this exact shaft, but it's a similar shaft. It's a uh, OEM made for shaft that came out of a fairway wood. Um, it's about 65 grams. It's a stiff flex shaft. So the first thing we did was we took frequency measurements. The first measurement we took was just the raw frequency measurement. So locking the butt end into the clamp, putting the weight, which is about 206 grams, onto the tip end, flexing and releasing it, and taking the measurement. And what we got there was a measurement of 284. Now again, that number is going to be pretty high if you're trying to compare it with other frequency measurements, but again, that's because this came out of a 3-wood and the weight on the end is only 206 grams. So next, we took a, what I call a simulated uh, butt cut measurement. That is, I didn't actually cut anything off the butt end. What I did was lock the shaft into the vise with an inch of the butt end of the shaft hanging past the vise. So that basically uh, duplicates what you would see if you cut the end off it. It's locked that portion of the shaft out. It's not going to have any influence on the measurements. So we'd have an inch of the shaft hanging off the end, put the same tip weight back on the tip, took a measurement, and this time we got a measurement of 293. According to that, the stiffness has gone up. The number is higher, that means it's a stiffer shaft at this point. Okay, next we do the opposite. Instead of the butt trimming, we do a tip trim. Now in this case, I actually did cut an inch off the tip of the shaft. I move the shaft back so it's even with the end of the vise. So in both these cases, the shaft is the same length, either my simulated butt cut or my tip trimmed shaft. They're both the same length, it's just whether we cut from the tip end or the simulated butt end. Put it in the machine again, took the measurement. So what we got here was a measurement of 299, showing even stiffer. Okay, so the next thing we did was we did the deflection measurement. So I locked the butt end of the shaft into a vise. I hung an eight pound weight, approximately eight pound weight on the end of it, and took images of the deflection. So we started out again with the shaft in its raw uncut form, put the weight on it, took that image, then we did our simulated butt cut, locked it into the vise with an inch hanging off the end, put the weight on it, looked at the deflection again, and finally third measurement after we had tip cut the shaft an inch, put it in the vise, put the weight on it, and took the measurement again. What you'll see here is I've pulled the background out of these uh, videos so that I can put them all on top of each other and you can see them all at once. And what you see is starting with the raw shaft, its deflection, then the shaft that was simulated butt cut, you can see is just a slight bit stiffer. It's sitting a little bit higher up. Finally, when you look at the tip trim shaft, you can see it's even more rigid, it's sitting even more upright. So those are both frequency measurements and deflection measurements that are showing us essentially that whether we butt trim it or tip trim it, the shaft has gotten stiffer. It definitely gets far stiffer when we tip trim it, but it also gets stiffer when we butt trim it. Now we're going to look at averaging our bend profiles. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for starters is simplify this bend profile into just a straight line. Uh, we are just going to have a completely straight diagonal line 
running up, starting at the softest point at the tip and moving to the stiffest point at the butt end. Um, we are going to take some made up stiffness measurements and apply them to this shaft. We're gonna start at one and we're gonna go 10 different points, one through 10. So the softest will be one at the tip and the stiffest will be 10 at the butt end. Okay? Now we take these measurements and if we want to get an average stiffness, say, of this shaft, well, what do we do? We take those 10 measurements, we add them together, one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine plus 10, and we divide by the number of points we have, which was 10, and we get a stiffness or a number of 5.5. So that's our basic uh, base stiffness for this shaft. So if we look at that, we know that any number that we get above that means that the shaft is stiffer. Any number that we get below that would mean the shaft is softer. Okay, so now let's do the tip trimming of the shaft. So say we trim off part of the shaft at the tip and we lose that softest number, that number one. We'll take another average. We now have nine data points starting at two. So we add them together, two plus three plus four plus five, da 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 da, all the way to 10. And we divide that number by nine, the number of points we now have. And what we get there is six. Okay, that makes sense. We were at 5.5, we've tip trimmed it. We now have an average of six. But now let's go and go the other direction with it. Instead of cutting off that tip end, we're gonna cut off the butt end. So instead of losing that one, we're gonna cut it and lose the 10. So now we're gonna be adding points one through nine and dividing by nine. Well, you do that, you divide by nine, and you get the number five. Well, wait a second. Number five, that's softer than our initial uncut shaft, even though our frequency measurements and our deflections are showing that they get stiffer. Well, what's happening? Okay, so we have our tip cutting with relatively consistent results across frequency, across uh, the bend profile, across the deflection board. They all show the shaft gets stiffer. However, when we look at the butt end, there we get these opposing measurements. We get the frequency and the deflection saying that the shaft is getting stiffer, but when we look at the bend profile average, we get the shaft is actually softer. So what's going on here? Well, in order to understand this, I think we need to differentiate the method that we use in deflection and frequency, specifically frequency, um, versus the bend profile. And that is frequency does not isolate the shaft. What do I mean by that? Well, in order to get these measurements, these frequency measurements, it's not just looking at the shaft. It's looking at the shaft plus an amount of weight added to the end of the shaft. Well, that makes a huge difference and that explains why we get different results. Compare that to bend profile. The bend profile isolates the shaft. What do I mean by that? Well, it doesn't matter if I have 200 grams sitting on the end of the shaft, it doesn't matter if I have 400 grams sitting on the end of the shaft. The bend profile of a shaft does not change. That's just measuring the shaft. It's completely isolated from other parts of the golf club. And that is why you get varying results. In order to really make the frequency numbers work and to really be able to apply them, you have to combine not just the numbers you're getting, but numbers plus the addition or subtraction of weight, depending on what you're doing. Because if you trim a shaft from 45 inches, let's say to 44 inches, say it's a driver, you trim that shaft down, you do nothing else, you put the grip back on it, you don't do anything to the head weight. Well, all of a sudden you've now made that club seven or eight swing weight points lighter, which is quite a bit lighter. Um, and if you don't add weight back to it, most people are gonna find that club is probably gonna feel a little too light. It's gonna feel more like a wiffle ball bat. So you have to add some weight back to the head. Now, if you add that weight back to the head and you add that same amount of weight back 
and do the frequency measurement on it, what you will see is the shaft doesn't really change in stiffness, or if anything, it gets slightly softer. Depending, again, it depends on the amount of weight. If you add more weight to it, it's going to get softer. You keep adding weight to the head, the number you get on that frequency meter is going to keep going down, down, down. So it's incredibly dependent on the amount of weight that you have in the head. Compare that to the bend profile number, which again is completely isolated. It is just measuring the shaft. It has no care whether you have a heavy-headed club or a light-headed club. It's only measuring how the shaft and how the stiffness moves through the shaft, that being the softest part on the tip and the stiffest part on the butt end. And when you look at it that way, well, it makes sense. When you look at our average numbers, that sort of makes sense. If I've cut the stiffest portion of the shaft off from butt cutting, well, what I'm left with is a shaft that has less stiffness than it did prior to that. If I cut off the tip end, I've now removed the most flexible portion of the shaft. And overall, over the length of the shaft, it's now stiffer because comparatively, it's lost some of the most flexible section. So that's how you have to look at it. So the question you may be asking now is, well, that being the case, should I even be using a frequency meter to try and ascertain stiffness measurements from a shaft? And to be honest, I would say probably not. I mean, at this point, basically what I use my frequency meter for is just measuring shaft consistency. That being, if I get a new shaft, I'll put it into the frequency meter, I'll take a measurement, I'll rotate it slightly, take another measurement, rotate it slightly, take another measurement, try and get a bunch of different measurements going consistently around rotating the shaft to see how consistent it is, see if it's the same stiffness, the same feel, whether the logo is up and down or the logo is to the side, um, and using that to sort of judge the quality of a shaft. That, I think, is a very good application still of a frequency meter, but using it to try and hone in on certain frequency numbers, trying to get, you know, ooh, exactly 255 versus 253, that I really don't think is overly useful and I think is probably a waste of time in most, uh, in most cases. So hopefully this has made sense to you as far as what happens tip trimming versus butt trimming and why we looked at it in all these different ways and found that, well, some of these methods may be a little misleading um, and they may have led to you thinking that the shaft is always gonna get stiffer when you cut it down versus it depends on whether you tip trim it or butt trim it. Um, like we've said, what is the big difference is the frequency measurement specifically is not just measuring the shaft. It's measuring the shaft plus the addition of weight on the end, whereas the bend profile is just measuring the shaft, completely isolated with no influence of head weight. So, when you take those two things into consideration, I think looking at bend profiles or sort of having an understanding of how the shaft flex moves through it is going to be far more useful than trying to find specific frequency numbers. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below. I know this topic can get a little confusing, definitely. If you enjoyed the video, please, again, like it, share it, or subscribe to our channel. And until next time, keep it in the short grass.